do k &N filters improve airflow and therefore improve acceleration? Is an OEM genuine part from Toyota or Lexus better than k &N? This is what we're going to find out today. According to k &N, their air filter is designed to increase airflow by 50% and increase horsepower. What I want to know is, does this translate into an increase in real-world acceleration times? I'll be testing each of the air filters through a series of in-gear acceleration times in second, third and fourth gear to see how the engine reacts to different parts of the rev range with a less restrictive air filter. k &N filters may give power gains to performance cars, but I want to find out what it can do to an average family car like mine. The car I'm using for this experiment is my trustworthy 2009 Lexus IS220 diesel. This has the 2.2 inline 4 cylinder unit used in a number of Toyotas. The power is mated to the rear wheels via a 6 speed manual gearbox. Despite the fact that this car has full Lexus service history, the air filter hasn't been changed in 8 years. So the first test I'm going to do is to see how the OEM filter compares to the dirty OEM. This car's only done 56,000 mile, so that's probably the reason why the air filter hasn't been changed in so long, because Lexus have gone by the amount of miles that it's done rather than the amount of years. But it will be interesting to see if acceleration time is increased by swapping out the dirty old air filter for a new OEM filter. Then we'll move on to the K&N filter to see whether this increase in airflow equates to increased acceleration times. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. That's just after about 10 miles of testing and you can see how much dirt it's picked up already.
three, two, one, go. As soon as I had swapped out the OEM filter for the K&N filter, I did notice a slightly different sound from the turbo. The whistle seemed to be more prominent. However, it could have been a placebo effect because I was listening harder. In conclusion to this real-world acceleration test, we can see that out of the three different gears and three different air filters, there was no significant difference to acceleration. This doesn't mean to say that this would not work on a high-performance engine, perhaps with a larger turbo to take advantage of a less restrictive air filter, but for an average four-cylinder diesel that has not been tuned, you're better off buying the OEM filter, in my opinion. A manufacturer will spend a lot of research and development on your specific engine to ensure a long engine life and at the same time maximise an airflow. When deciding whether to go down the performance air filter route, do some research to find if anyone else has had performance gains on the same engine as you have, before you spend your own cash. I initially bought a k &N filter from Amazon for £54, but when it came delivered the box was all damaged, so I had to return it. I then bought one direct from K&N for £70 and there were no delivery issues. The genuine Toyota OEM air filter was £29. I don't know if you can see that there, but the K&N filter is still grabbing quite a lot of debris, flies, dusts and particles as that's in the air. You can see all that, that's only after about 10 minutes of testing, maybe it's 5 miles. Something else to consider is that if you live in a dusty or sandy climate, it's in your best interest to use the OEM filter over the K&N filter. The good thing about having a performance filter is that it's a modification that's easily reversible. You can use your standard OEM filter for everyday use and swap out the performance filter for days out at SantaPod, for example. I hope you found this video useful or at least interesting. I would love to hear your own experience using a performance filter over an OEM filter and whether you've noticed any gains yourself.